Hello, everybody, and welcome to IHLS InnoTech International Conference. In this segment, we'll discuss your privacy, your information. Where is it? Somewhere in the clouds. We have a very distinguished panel here, and uh, please, uh, lady and gentlemen, introduce yourselves by way of sitting. Let's start with you, Moshe. Hi. Good evening. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. My name is Moshe. I manage the local chapter for the, uh, for the Israeli Cloud Security Alliance. Basically, we produce best practices and uh, standards and research around cloud computing, how to make it more secure, more private. Great. Guy, you're the chairperson of this session, and what else? Yes, I'm the chief cyber officer at Raison Group. That's it. That's it. That's enough. <laughs> Iftar. Hi, I'm the Iftar Ian Amit. I'm the chief security officer of uh, Simpress, a multinational corporation based out of uh, Boston and with activities all over the world. Admit. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Admit. I'm a technological lawyer. Um, I'm specializing in privacy and security laws and regulations and also so serve as a DPO, Data Protection Officer, for some, organi for some international organizations. Yeah, well, we have a lot to talk about protection here. Uh, <laughs> David? Hi. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm David Rosenblatt. I'm a CTO in uh, IBM, IBM Security. Uh, we responsible to protecting data, if it's on the cloud, if it's on-prem. Uh, we do all the thing around protecting data. Great. We'll uh, go on with um, first name basis with your permission. Uh, Guy, let's start uh, with you. Take us to the cloud first. Uh, what's the deal? How safe is it? What's going on there? <laughs> uh, this is a this great question because, you know, the cloud is not ours. We are using it. We're using someone else's resources. Uh, basically, we put all our data. It doesn't matter if you use the iPhone, if you're smart or you use Android, <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. All your data is not on your device. It's not just on your device. It's somewhere on the cloud. And what is a cloud? It's someone else's computer. Someone else's take care of the security on, on, on every aspect of the security. Yeah, it reminds me of the Beatles, Lucy in disguise with diamonds. Our diamonds are somewhere in disguise in the clouds. Moshe, um, so how secure is it, if, if at all? Well, the question is basically, uh, first of all, the cloud is very different for different types of people. I mean, we have clouds for consumer. The problem over there is because uh, cloud is, uh, have a model of uh, don't pay, but I will use your data. Mm -hmm. This is where the, you know, the bad thought about cloud came from, the bad reputation of the infamous uh, of cloud services. This is usually where it came from. But that is a specific model for specific type of people. And if we're talking about organization, some of the world largest organization and most secure organization and highly regulated regulation are placing themselves on top of cloud computing. So the world cloud basically describes very different type of services. Could be uh, some, something that is less secure, less private, uh, because they're dealing with your information, but you can produce highly scalable, highly secure platform on top of cloud yeah, computing. That's, that's the upside. David, um, is uh, cloud uh, a great solution or also a problem? <clears throat> cloud is a great solution, but is also a problem. Uh, I really think that, uh, uh, like Moshe was talking, it depends who is the consumer. Uh, in IBM, we're more looking on the enterprise uh, uh, consumer. And in, in the cloud, you cannot be uh, responsible only for the cloud security. You need to have more layers of security and not just one layer in the cloud. The cloud provider will give me security. It's not going to work like that. If you want to have more layer of security, you probably will have a, a problem later. Okay, here's a user. Iftah, you're a user. <laughs> yes. Well, tell us about your experiences and worries at the same time. So as, as David said before, uh, the cloud, and Moshe mentioned that as well, it's just a platform. Uh, it really needs the user to use it and to secure it. Uh, the cloud doesn't mean that the security is taken care of by the cloud provider and that's it. There is a shared responsibility model. And as a user myself, uh, for my companies and our organization, we know that we cannot just take our information and throw it in the cloud and expect everything to be you know, diamonds in the sky. We know we have to protect it. So we're not assuming that everything is protected by default. We know that we have to control the data, that we have to take accountability and responsibility for what we're doing in the cloud. 
And I think that most of the, the fears from the cloud are coming from users that do not have that mentality and are making very basic mistakes and assuming that things are just gonna happen because it's very easy to create something really quickly in the cloud and completely forget about securing it. Right. Which brings us to you, Admit. After everybody spoke here, let's go to the lawyer. <laughs> and, and you tell us uh, how do you deal with this? Okay, the cloud actually raises a few challenges. First of all, where the data is located. Um, according to GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation of the EU, and also other privacy regulation in international privacy laws, actually um, impose a restriction regarding where the data should be stored and where it forces. In the cloud, you often don't know where your, cloud, uh, where your data is stored. So this is very important when you use you know, the solutions. First, you need to know which, what type of solution you use. And the second one, you need to define, configure well where the data will be located and process. So this is one issue that the cloud is challenge us. Um, a good tip here is just um, prepare a list of all type of data that you have in your organization and put, you know, um, where is it located in the cloud, then you can see if you're compliant or not, and so on. Um, other issue that it's raised, there is no boundaries. You know, um, for example, uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, Microsoft Office 365 uh, raised uh, this issue with um, the court, the street court in US, um, issued a warrant against Microsoft US to um, bring the correspondence of a specific defendant in the US, but the correspondence located at Ireland, Microsoft Ireland. So uh, Microsoft claim, um, we can so There's a whole it. new issue of jurisdiction here. It's in the right. cloud, yeah. Definitely. Who regulates this? What's and wrong? It just, uh, yeah. it just, uh, just push on the button and bring us the cloud, the information. And it's, of course, problem for, uh, you know, boundaries with, uh, between countries and so on. Right. So, so uh, Moshe, uh, what we're talking about is a bunch of servers and, um, you know, some someplace uh, and, and uh, According to what Admit said, maybe we need more transparency from the suppliers of these clouds, so-called. Mm -hmm. It's just a buzzword cloud. What is it? First of all, uh, cloud is one of the most defined stuff there is. There has been the NIST definition, NIST, the National Institute of Standard Technology, has been defining cloud well for 10 years ago already. So unlike what everybody thinks that cloud is something, the place in the map that you don't understand where it is, cloud is actually well defined. Uh, and it basically has the types of services and type of deployment models, and it's very good. For example, uh, jurisdiction. When I okay. use a cloud, do I know where it is? Yeah. Which country? Actually, yes. I know? Yeah. Yeah. In most cases, for enterprise, they can choose the location of their data. Okay? They can choose where it is, which region, and they have the provider commitment that the data will not be relocating out of it. So I can know where it is. The only problem is, from the technology, we built everything amazing. I mean, we can, I can launch servers half side of, uh, half around the world, no problem. The problem came with the lawyers and the legal and the legal <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, and in the past, it was very easy. It, it's located in Ireland, so only Irish can cut. And of course, as Admit yeah. says, now uh, Things used to be simple in the past, but um, Iftah, let me ask you, uh, uh, do you worry about stuff like that when you, um, you know, decide which cloud to use? Absolutely. Uh, so as, as Admit said before, you have to know where your data is located, especially recently with the uh, SREM2 uh, decisions in the European Union court that regulated or mandated even stricter uh, requirements on EU data leaving the EU towards specifically the US as, and as a multinational corporation that's headquartered in Ireland uh, officially but has offices in the US and, and all over Europe, we obviously have a, a huge issue with that. Uh, part of that is obviously choosing cloud providers that do enable us that level of visibility and accountability to say this is where, where my data is at, here's how I control it, here's how I know if it's leaving that region or not, mm. so that I can support my DPO and our legal uh, facilities across our companies in the agreements between them. Because sometimes, even between my own companies, I have to make sure that we have legal agreements about data transfer across 
geographies, which right. is crazy in the cloud. But, but David, isn't the idea is that uh, uh, data is moving around all the time? How can you place it someplace at all? So <clears throat> first, you must, because if you want to be uh, 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 comply with one regulation, if you will take it out of the EU, you will have a problem. Oh, so uh, you can do that. There are many centers, I will say, across the globe and inside each uh, EU and, and other places um, to do that. But as IBM can provide cloud services, we sit with the uh, customer and agree on the regulation that we need to uh, uh, comply with so it can be something that you, later on the customer will come and say, oh, ABC is met. Yes, it is, and he can comply with the, the regulation. And I think that is extremely important to add it to the cloud, not just uh, uh, having your data somewhere, but comply to some regulation around it. Uh, Admit, did you have uh, problems with security, which uh, have been uh, sp specifically uh, to, to cloud situations? Um, yes, actually. Um... Um, recently, the Israel Authority initiated an um, audit uh, for, um, on the, all the cloud providers. And um, it's, found in, its finding was that 20% um, of the cloud providers were not comply with uh, information security. Um, uh, for example, 2FA, uh, when you connect the cloud, you do it by network, by public network or internet. Uh, so. Uh, it needs to be more safe, so you need to factor authentication to steps when you um, access in. Uh, for example, this is a basic, uh, I think uh, Moshe will agree with me, basic thing in cloud, you know, security, and 20% uh, was not aligned. <coughs> of course, it's about, you know, a perspective. They say they're not supposed to align with the information security, uh, you know, the highest uh, standard because they provide just, you know, the service, the um, hardware, let's say the virtual hardware and so on, and they don't touch the, the, the data, the data encrypted, they don't know what happened there, it's all about the user usage <coughs> and so on. So uh, the Israel Authority, as, as well as the US, EU and US, say that the cloud provider has um, a liability here, he is responsible for um, specific to adhere with specific standard according to Israeli law and other um, GDPR and security, information security laws. So it's something that... Yeah, uh, well, uh, it looks like we have some still a few uh, open questions about this yeah. as we progress <laughs> with clouds. We thank you uh, very much. Thank you, lady and gentlemen. Thank so you. far for the clouds. We'll see you soon in the next segment.